wanted to share something with you that's not a rapture dream, but I believe that it's something that was indelibly engraved into my spirit long, long ago. Is actually a visit from an angelic messenger that told me why it was so important for us to spread this gospel. And so it happened when I was a young man. I'm almost 60 now, but this happened when I was in my early 20s, way back when I was in the military and a baby Christian. I was in the service and I worked in the hospital. I had a girlfriend who worked there too, but we worked different hours and in different duty sections. And after my shift, I would often go to her duty section and bring her dinner or something like that and just kind of hang out to talk with her. And you know, this wasn't allowed, but her sergeant was cool with it. And since I was new in the faith, I called myself trying to convert her. And that was the reason I gave for always hanging out with her in her duty section. And I would try to find places during our conversations where I could inject the Lord or witness to her or do something like that. But she wasn't having it. She really didn't want to hear it. She wasn't rude, but she would just listen for a while. And then after a minute, she would change the subject. She was elusive. And all those times that I visited her, she never got angry with me. And you know, her sergeant's desk was directly behind hers. It was separated by one of those office partitions. And I would often catch him peering around the petition. And I assumed that he was eavesdropping, you know, and I would get embarrassed. And then I would tone it down a bit, especially if I was talking about the Lord. But I could tell that he was curious, but I never got up the nerve to tell him about the Lord. As a matter of fact, I began to kind of get uncomfortable with even visiting after a while. But now I believe the Holy Spirit was urging me to approach the sergeant and tell him about Jesus. But I shut all the way down, even after it was confirmed in my spirit that that's what I was there to do. But the Holy Spirit never let up on me. As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit got louder, but I just wasn't having it. But I know that this was the urging of the Holy Spirit because I would often find myself thinking about Sergeant Estrada and God would ask me to pray for him. Still, no dice, I refused to be obedient. And one Saturday afternoon, the dormitory phone rang in the hallway. And this phone, this is back in the day when they had pay phones, and this thing was hanging on the wall right outside my room. So everybody who got a phone call, I would have to go get, you know. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, can somebody just jerk that phone out of the wall? But it was there, and it was annoying, but it was useful. And one day, it, that Saturday, it rang, and I got up, and I answered it. And lo and behold, it was my girlfriend, but she was frantic. And I tried to make out what she was saying, but I couldn't until she calmed down a bit. And she told me that the sergeant had been rushed into the ER, suffered from a massive heart attack. And during that conversation, I found that um, he had arrived DOA. And, you know, we were young people. I think I was 21, 22, and so he couldn't be any older than 26 or 27. You know, we were young people. And when I heard that he hadn't survived, the guilt hit me like a ton of bricks. So I hung up with her and went back into my room and I began to cry. Just It just came over me. And I, as I cried, I, I went ahead and laid down on my bed and had the urge to pray. And so that's what I did. Don't know why I was praying for the dead, that the dead can't benefit from our prayers. Should have been praying for his family, but I didn't know I was a baby Christian and I was only, you know, 21 or 22. But back then I lived in the World War II dorms on the base that I was stationed at. And the rooms in the dormitory were large. And they were mostly built out of cinder block, painted machine, semi-gloss gray. And the room had a standalone bookshelf between the, the beds, flush against the wall. So I could see everything in the room. I had a clear view of, every, of the entire room. And in the corner, I had this little mini fridge. You know, this little fridge um, was the topic of many conversations. People would always come to the room and say, man, you know, 
you need to get yourself a real fridge. You can't hold nothing in that fridge. And I used to just kind of say, man, that's my fridge. Leave my fridge alone. And this fridge looked really small against that 12-foot ceiling. And then as I looked around the room and looked into that corner, through my tears, I saw the most amazing thing that I had ever seen. It was a being. I saw a being taking up the whole of that corner. And I can remember thinking to myself, is he standing on my mini fridge or is he standing in my mini fridge? Because he was like transparent, translucent. You could see kind of through him. And it was the most amazing thing. And if I had to describe him, I'd describe him as a little under 12 foot tall because his head was right at the ceiling with a chest as wide as a compact car. This guy was massive and he was dressed in the brightest white that I had ever looked upon. So bright that it was almost hard to look on it, but at the same time, it was pleasant. And I knew that I was shielded from this glory because if I had to look at that with my natural eye, it would have blinded me. And once I realized what was happening, I knew that he was an angel, that something supernatural was happening to me and for me. It didn't seem like it was for me at the time I was mortified. I couldn't see his face clearly, but I did notice that he had three sets of wings, one set wrapped around his body like, like a bird's would wrap around its body. The, another set waved back and forth, veiling his face, and the other set was folded behind his back. And I assumed that those were the wings that he used to fly with. And I was shocked and awe-inspired. And as fear gripped my whole body, somehow I knew exactly why he came to see me. He came to remind me of my failure to tell Sergeant Estrada about Jesus. I'll never forget that. And you know, he never said an audible word, but I heard him in the spirit. And he said, you never told Sergeant Estrada about the Lord. And he only said it once and very seriously, but it resonated in me for way longer than it should have. And I knew that this was a message directly from the Lord. And the shame that I felt was overwhelming. It was the kind of shame that a kid experiences when he's been told not to go into the cookie jar, but he gets caught stealing cookies anyway. Then this immense feeling of love came over me. And in my spirit, I knew that this was a message straight from the throne room of God. And I believe that at that time I was given my calling, which I know now isn't anything special because we're all called to tell everyone that we meet about the love of Christ. But I didn't know any better back then because I was a baby Christian. I was only 21, you know. And But the love I felt and the peace that I felt that came off of that angelic messenger was so calming that it actually lulled me to sleep. Peaceful sleep. You know, the love was so gripping that I can hardly, you know, hardly wrap my head around it. And something I've never experienced since. And the message from this angel left me with a disturbing question though. The question was, number one, why didn't I tell Sergeant Estrada about Jesus? And if I didn't tell him, did someone? And if someone did, who was that someone? And so my prayer is that someone did tell him. I think about that often. And so I believe that that paved the way for what I'm doing today. And I've been doing this in obedience for about eight years now. You know, up until now, I'm talking about on, this, on my platform, but up until now, you know, it was hit or miss. You know, I'd encounter people and tell them about the Lord. And if I had a chance... But now it's imperative because time is winding up and people are depending on our witness. The only way some people will see Jesus is through us. And the only way 
Some people will hear about Jesus through us. And as time winds up, we have to know that we'll be held accountable for the opportunities that we missed in bringing people into the kingdom of God. So it's more important than ever that we do what Jesus last called us to do, and that is to go into the highways and into the byways. This is everybody who has accepted Christ and spread the gospel of Jesus around the world. Time is of the essence now because we want to be found doing what he told us to do should he suddenly crack that sky, which that's how it's going to happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. So I really appreciate you letting me share this message on your platform and um, because, yeah, it's time to put down the milk and cookies and pick up the steak and eggs because he's coming back soon, just like he said. And so thank you so much for letting me share. And um, yeah, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and shalom.